I'm wearing my academic gown. It's a symbol of, I suppose, one's place in the university hierarchy, if you like. I also had a very fancy bonnet, but those are only for very special days. The kind of physics I do is very much the physics of the everyday. I work with familiar materials, not outer space, not the Large Hadron Collider, but I'm interested in things like food and paint and increasingly biological materials. Creativity is fundamental to being a scientist and I think that's something that we don't shout about enough. I think people who work in, say, literature or, or poetry or something will think that they're the creatives and that science is cut and dried and it simply isn't like that. I fell in love with physics when I was about 13. I always knew it was what I wanted to study at university. But quite honestly, girls and careers weren't really talked about much then. And I don't think I thought about a career at all. I expected to get married at, I don't know, 25, have a family, and that would be it. And that was just the norm. And so I suppose I fell into the career without much pre-planning. As I went up through the system, I think I became more aware of being a woman and different. I didn't necessarily fit in. I was given lots of opportunities to sit on committees, for instance, but if you're in a minority of one, it doesn't mean that you're really heard. I think our systems are very, if you like, outdated in what is valued. We do have women in the university who've been promoted to being professor, working part-time, but not everyone seems to believe that that can be done and are surprised when we say that. And you should be judged on the quality of your work, not the quantity. So part-time working, for instance, if you're trying to fit in carrying responsibilities, should not be a problem, be it for men or women. And so those are the things we have to change mindsets. And I think only by teasing out what the actual blocks are um, will we change things. But I think it's systemic and we should be very, very careful about saying, oh, it's the woman's fault and it's the woman who wants to have children and that's the problem. That's far too simplistic. And many men want to be good parents too. My husband has always been hugely important. But one of the things, when people talk about me as a role model, one of the things that worries me is that in, ultimately, my husband gave up his career. When we had children, we were really concerned about being there for them at the end of the day and not just sort of passing them over to someone else to look after them. So in the end, he became the house husband. And that is a really difficult thing. When we did it, it was very, very unusual and quite uncomfortable. But now it is getting commoner. Every couple has to work out their own way of doing it. It's always going to be a challenge. It seems to me that we still bring up young girls to be frightened and to conform. Uh, and, you know, you can see it with a, a parent looking at their children climbing trees and they'll say to the boy, oh, you know, that's wonderful, you're going so high. And to the girl, are you sure you're not going to fall? That kind of subliminal message that girls shouldn't aspire, shouldn't take risks, I think, is very dangerous. So to, to young women now, I would say, dare take courage, have a go, because otherwise you'll never achieve what you want to achieve and what you're capable of. I think we facilitate girls holding themselves back to some extent. You offer both children the chance to play with Meccano, go to ballet lessons, whatever it is, and they will choose what's right for them. And um, we shouldn't make presumptions based on stereotypes.